My name is Seven Gray, and today I want to talk about one of the most frequently asked questions that I get asked all the time about my step van, and that's by people who want to buy a step van and convert it over to a camper RV motorhome. And that is how to get insurance. Believe it or not, it's crazy difficult to get insurance. Before we get into the whole insurance thing, I should explain. I travel probably about half the year outside of the United States, or at least that's the plan in the future. And so there's going to be many months where I'm not in my step van, and I want to keep the step van channel going. So during those times when I'm not in the step van and traveling, I want to produce videos where I answer a question or discuss a topic that's relevant to step vans and people that are wanting to do the things that I'm doing with my step van. So I wanted to start with the insurance. I'm in Spain right now, so that's why you're seeing all this stuff in the background. The problem you'll run into with getting insurance for a step van is insurance companies are not expecting a private individual to be buying or insuring a step van, so they're just not set up for it. I would highly recommend that you start doing your research for insurance before you buy your step van. Don't wait until after you have your step van to get your insurance. The first thing you want to do is find a step van or two in say Craigslist or Classified or something like that. Write down the information uh, before you buy them and then contact an insurance agent and go through uh, the routine a few times until you establish a relationship with an agent that sort of knows what you're about and what you're up to. The name of the step van and the model of the step van comes into two areas. Like for instance, I have a Grumman Olsen step van, um, but it has a Freightliner frame underneath. So the, the transmission, engine, frame, suspension, all of that is assembled by Freightliner. So on the title, it'll say Freightliner MT45. That's what the insurance company needs to know. If I were to call them up and say Grumman Olsen, uh, they're not going to know what that is because that's really just the box and that's not how it's titled or registered. So you need to know the distinction between the two if you're looking at a classified ad selling a Grumman Olsen. It's not going to be helpful to the insurance company and you're going to hit roadblocks. So once you've figured out that, figured out the model number, all the uh, tech information, basically it's going to be the, uh, the year and the model. That's basically what you need to do to call the insurance company. And then you need to be prepared for them to ask you probably four or five questions. After they ask you the year and the model number, they're going to ask you if this is for personal or business use. And this is where you have to be sort of careful and you basically will say that you're looking at Craigslist right now at buying a vehicle and you're, you'd like to use it for personal use and not for commercial, but you had heard from someone that uh, step vans can only be insured as commercial vehicles. So you wanted to see if that was true, and if it was, you're considering getting a business license to open a small business. If you can get it for personal use, then fantastic, that's great, that's the way to go, unless you own a business and you can just go that route and that simplifies things uh, quite a bit. Um, if you do need to go the business route, let me talk about that. Let me talk about the basic things that you need to be a quote unquote business to satisfy the insurance company. Becoming a business is really a simple, super, super simple process. You don't need to sell anything. You don't need to actually engage in business at all. You don't need to have a service. All you need is one, possibly two legal documents. The first legal document you're going to need is what's called a DBA, doing business as. That links you as an individual, your name, John Smith, doing business as Smith's uh, Special Services. That's basically it. It's a legal document that connects the two. That's what the bank wants to have to open a bank account. You don't need to open a bank account to get your insurance. You don't need to go there unless you're actually going into business. All you need to do is have the DBA document. That's it. Document probably costs $10, maybe $15 at most each year. And if you want to take it a step further and you can consult a lawyer about this or somebody who's a business expert, so you want to get a business license as a service so that you don't have to worry about collecting tax. Uh, and you can make up any service you want. You can say that you're going to draw uh, cartoon characters, that you're going to um, 
you know, they make it something really easy that you're going to do consulting. That's probably the easiest. It could be Smith Consulting Services. That's it. Super simple. And you go get your business license. Business license in most counties, you get it from the county clerk. And it's going to be $40 to maybe $70, $80 in most counties that I've seen per year. So even if you had to go that route to get the DBA uh, certificate and the business license, you're still less than $100 to be in business and you don't have to do anything else. Those are the two documents you need to be in business. I personally wouldn't recommend going into the insurance agent and explaining that you have a DBA, you have a business license, but you don't have a bank account. That's really just disclosing a lot of information that's not going to help you out. If you have your DBA and your business license, you're in business. Um, if you're concerned about the legalities of that, I'm not a lawyer. I would consult with either a business consultant or a lawyer, attorney, somebody like that uh, about the legalities of it. The next question they'll ask is, how will you be using the step van? So I'm, I'm bringing these questions up in advance so you can sort of <laughs> rehearse and think about what your answers are going to be. Uh, for me, I have a real estate license in Florida, and I just simply said that I'm going to use it for transporting things like drywall, construction supplies, for uh, rehab, um, and repairs to my properties. Uh, when they're damaged and when I purchase a new property, this is what I'm going to use. And that's true. Um, I went down to Florida. I use this for transporting things around. I'm using it for uh, construction goods. This is true, that's not 100% the use, but that is uh, one of the uses of the vehicle and that is its business use. Um, I didn't mention that I'm going to do videos, but I could say that I'm going to use this for a video project, that I'm going to be traveling around the United States and doing videos, and that that's the purpose of the step van is a studio for that. That's another idea for you. Those are the questions that you're going to be asked by the insurance agent. You're not going to be quizzed on a bunch of other things. Volunteering additional information is only going to complicate your life and for the insurance uh, company. You want to think of getting insurance a little bit like going on a first date. You don't want to be disclosing that you have issues with your mother. You don't want to be disclosing that uh, you have a fear of um, taking off your clothes in front of strangers. These things are not going to help you on a first date. The same thing is true with uh, purchasing uh, insurance from an insurance company. Wait for them to ask the questions. Volunteering information that they don't ask for is not going to help you out. For instance, my first two or three calls to insurance companies, I said, yeah, I want to buy a step van. I want to convert it into a camper. The first insurance agent replied that and said, oh, sorry, we don't insure that. The second time I did that, they said, well, we only accept a conversion from three companies. So you have to get it uh, actually converted by one of these three companies and get a certificate of completion that the entire conversion was done by these three companies, then we'll insure you. And that's pretty much true with uh, homemade motorhomes and RVs in the insurance world. That's the way they treat things. But if you look at their documents and the issued policy, uh, after it's issued to you, there's nothing saying that you can't convert it after the fact, meaning you can purchase it for commercial purposes, uh, moving around drywall, things like that, and you can put a bed in the sink in the back, and you can sleep in your vehicle. There's nothing in the documentation that prevents you from doing that. So my recommendation, again, check with your lawyer, I'm not a legal entity, is to go out, just get your insurance, uh, using your step van as a studio for art or a uh, video studio or transporting goods for repairs or whatever it's going to be and then put a bed in the back in the sink and that's just sort of an augment to your studio workspace. My last piece of advice is to try to find a broker agent to find your insurance. They know of like 20 or 30 different companies and they'll be really good at finding a solution that works for you. So if you go look for a broker, um, it's not going to cost you any more because they take a cut out of the offered rate, the same as you calling directly to State Farm or someplace like that. That's what I ended up doing. I went to a broker 
and the broker went out and looked at all the companies and then my ultimate policy even though I purchased it through the broker is with Progressive so um, who would have thought you know I had called Progressive way earlier and I got stonewalled when I was talking them uh, on the phone and then when the agent put in the paperwork and everything it went through just fine so I highly recommend you work with a agent and simplify your life make things way easier um, I ended up paying about $47 a month. Uh, the lowest policy just for liability was about 36 That's a pretty good deal. Um, I decided I wanted a little bit better co coverage. I still just have liability, so it's slightly under 50 um, This next year when I renew my policy, I'm probably going to increase uh, my insurance to get full coverage at some level. I'm not sure how much that'll um, cost, but I think it's going to be worth it. I don't feel it's going to be really helpful to give out the name of my insurance agent that I went through because I'm in Texas, probably you're not. If you are in Texas and you're desperate and you're getting uh, stuck, then you can send me a private message and uh, get in contact with me and I'll give you some uh, contact information so you can proceed. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's all I have for talking about step van insurance. Hope you enjoyed this video, found it helpful. If so, that you can hit the like button, you can subscribe, you can watch more videos, you can check out my other travel vlog channel. And thank you for watching. Savor the moment. I hope to see you in another video.